In this video, we will describe the bubble sign, a technical trick to differentiate between partial and full thickness tears of the rotator cuff. In normal conditions, the glenohumeral joint functions in a suction cup stabilization method with articulation between the glenoid and humeral head forming a vacuum-like seal, limiting total joint volume and preventing humeral head subluxation. The glenohumeral joint, highlighted by the green mark, typically has a negative pressure of around negative 4 millimeters of mercury, created by the difference in pressure between the joint synovial fluid and synovial interstitium. Contrarily, the subacromial space, highlighted by the red mark, has a pressure range of 8 to 17.5 millimeters mercury at rest. Hence, the native shoulder joint has a natural pressure gradient, lower in the glenohumeral joint and greater in the subacromial space, separated by an intact supraspinatus tendon. When the integrity of the supraspinatus tendon is disrupted, a connection now forms between the high and low pressure compartments. Free fluid subsequently flows from the high pressure subacromial space to the low pressure glenohumeral joint. The flow of this fluid arthroscopically manifests as air bubbles when the supraspinatus tendon is lifted, suggesting a full thickness rotator cuff tear. To perform the bubble sign technique, the patient is carefully placed in the beach chair position. The operative extremity is prepped and draped in the normal sterile fashion and the portal sites are marked using a surgical marker referenced off the bony landmarks of the acromion, acromioclavicular joint, lateral clavicle, and coracoid. Operative shoulder is placed in a neutral rotation and slight flexion, and this position is held by a commercially available arm positioning device. The standard arthroscopy portals are then demarcated in relation to the native bony landmarks. By standard technique, the primary viewing portal, the posterior portal, is marked by its location 2 cm inferior and 1 cm medial to the posterior lateral corner of the acromion. Anteriorly, the anterior portal is marked by its location directly lateral to the coracoid process. With the arthroscope in the posterior portal and the probe in the anterior portal, a standard diagnostic arthroscopy of the glenohumeral joint is then performed to assess for any intraarticular pathology. However, to fully investigate the crescent tissue of the supraspinous tendon, it has been our standard practice to move the forearm from neutral rotation to about 30 to 35 degrees of adducted external rotation. An arthroscopic probe or nerve hook is then placed over the intraarticular portion of the biceps tendon, if present, and the crescent tissue of the rotator cuff is lifted off the greater tuberosity. As the supraspinatus is lifted, air bubbles can be seen rushing from the subacromial space to the glenohumeral joint, called the bubble sign, helping to confirm the presence of a full thickness tear. By standard practice, a subacromial arthroscopy, not shown in this video, is performed for a complete diagnostic assessment, including a full assessment of the rotator cuff from the bursal side. All intraarticular pathology, including the rotator cuff tear, is then treated by standard techniques.